Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting. Uh, what's the date? September 26, 2017. Um, we opened in uh, executive session earlier to discuss strategies with respect to collective bargaining updates by the town manager relative police, fire, and DPW unions, and also to discuss uh, some aspects of the Eversource issues. Um, as per uh, normal, we're going to uh, do the stand in to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. I love that part. Not gonna see our ratings suffer. <coughs> oh, I so wanted to get. I know you did. I know you did. Glad you didn't. There's not a room up here. It's just, you know, just we'll just stay friends. How's that? Okay. Um, <laughs> My knee wasn't broken. <laughs> We're going to keep going, people. Okay, public forum. Uh, residents are invited to up to uh, share ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding town government. Is there anybody in the in the audience that would like to come forward? Just well, come on up. <coughs> Excuse me. Enter and sign in, please. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Beth Malloy, 190 Lumber Street. Do you want anything right now? Um, we came here tonight re representing a growing number of Hopkinton citizens um, who are very concerned over the prospect of the Friends of the Greyhound uh, getting their kennel license back. It's, um, it, it's my understanding that this is the decision of the Board of Selectmen, is that correct? Uh, <laughs> not quite yet. Not exactly. Is this like a not it? <laughs> it will be it, but not quite yet. Yeah. Right. It's, uh, it's actually being held up by the state at this point, mm -hmm. and so it has to be released by the state, and then... Is that due to the criminal to, um, case against Ms. Coleman? There's, a, there's even more than that. that. Those are two separate issues. Okay. And the way I understand it, uh, Mr. Kamalo might have something different. Yeah. Uh, again, um, specifically, it's the state's decision there's also the decision that needs to be made by the town clerk in consultation with the animal control officer. <coughs> the board of selectmen's involvement is in relation to the public hearing that was previously posted to review the allegations that the board of selectmen had received previously. Okay. Yeah. Which was taken off the, was it taken off the table? The lawyer representing Greyhound yeah. asked that the board not act until further notice. Mm -hmm. yes. So we continued the hearing. Right. Right? It was postponed. We never had postponed the hearing. The hearing. No, no, we never had yes, it was postponed. It's still on the table. But it it was, still has to happen. So it was snowed out once and then it was postponed. Yes. Right. Uh, so they haven't even come back to us to even ask us to open, re reopen that hearing yet. Okay. Um, I just want to share with you some of the information um, that we found. Uh, which is they've had three cease and desist orders between 2010 and 2017. Um, in 2011, they were cited um, with a cease and desist order because their limit on dogs was, um, they had too many dogs on site. So then, back then, the Board of Selectmen voted to take action in support of expanding their numbers from 22 to 50. There are people out there who are under the assumption that you guys are going to reinstate the kennel license um, by rewriting the bylaw. There was something that came up um, shortly after the cease and desist, and John, you're saying no, that's not? We, we you know, I, I saw some of that, some of that rhetoric on, uh, uh, online, and I don't know where some of these stories are coming from, because... Um, we haven't had a discussion about it. We haven't, <laughs> we haven't discussed it in s six months, maybe? Five months? So, yeah. I, you know, if, if I may, Mr. Chair, um, because of some of the problems that surfaced, uh, you may recall at this year's past town meeting, we enacted a new kennel bylaw, 
with some very strict provisions in it, specifically designed to, in the future, <coughs> guard against the types of situations that we ha uh, that are alleged to have happened. Um, to the point that we have been told that Hopkinton now has one of the strongest kennel bylaws in the state of Massachusetts. So if, they, if you're hearing anything about a kennel bylaw, um, you probably should know that we have enacted a very strong bylaw it was the la at the last town meeting. And is that somewhere on li line, Claire, that I could, I could uh, check it out? It was, it was in the warrant for the town meeting, which we voted on, and it must now be probably up online yes. in the mm -hmm. town bylaws, yes. Okay, so I can look for it there. The town clerk would have it as well. Okay, I'll check with him. Um, I guess I guess what many of us are afraid of, and I'll I'll speak for myself and Joanna, is I feel as though the town has gotten a really bad mark with having to been affiliated with the conditions that happened there, and it's it's our hope and it's our prayer that collectively we can make sure that this never happens in our town again. Um, and I hope that we have your vote behind us in making sure, you know, in all honesty, they were given so many chances to clean up and change things. And there's so many other factors that I'm not gonna mention here um, that come into play and it just, it just can't happen in our town or any other town, to be honest with you. But um, I appreciate your time. Yeah, really, thank you very much for coming up. We, don't, we, we, we are aware of all of this and that's why we did update the uh, bylaw earlier, um, but um, no, as, as, as far as some of that information that was coming down, um, we don't know where, where it came from or who started it up or why. Well, I can but tell you, Peter has their eye on you. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, that's why I saw it, and yeah, that's why I saw it, and I just couldn't believe that uh, that they could come up and say stuff that, uh, well, a lot of people say stuff that's not true nowadays. I guess what they call it, fake news. Yeah, and that definitely was. <laughs> Beth, I you appreciate me. you coming up rather than just. I mean, we've gotten probably we're probably close to a thousand emails pro and con for this. I appreciate you coming up and not just being one of these people that are sending a form letter. <coughs> saying blah blah blah, <laughs> copy and paste. Yeah, they think they think we don't read them. <laughs> yeah, it's just got, like the same we, one. We must have times. gotten 125 the other day of the exact same thing, with the exception of there may be three that said they weren't a Hopkinton resident; they were a Massachusetts resident. Everything else was just a form letter. So, okay. well, it's thank nice you, Brian, you, for responding to my to my email. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks for your time. Thanks so much. Thanks Thank for coming. Thanks. Anybody else want to come up? Okay, with that, we'll uh, jump into the uh, consent agenda. We have uh, oh, first, did you get an answer on that? board minutes, ambulance fund donations. We'll, com we'll consider accepting donations made to the ambulance fund. Uh, resignation, the board will consider accepting resignation of Kevin Nathan to the Hop uh, of the Hopton Veterans Celebration Committee. Uh, proclamation, the Board of Selectmen will consider approving a <coughs> proclamation declaring Columbus Day weekend 2017 as Hopkinton High School Alumni Weekend. Selectmen will congratulate members of the Hopkinton High School class of 1967 on its 50th reunion. Does anybody want to break out any of these? Mr. Chair, item number four, if we have representatives from the class of 67 here this evening. Are there any here tonight? Okay, I'd like Excellent. to break that out, please. Okay. I would like to break out the resignation of Kevin Nathan, please. Yeah, I was okay. going to actually break them both up. All right. Um, and uh, do you want to break out the ambulance form? I don't. Okay. Thank you for asking, though. So, um, okay, so the chair will entertain a motion for one, one and two. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, resignation. Claire. I, I Kevin isn't here tonight, but I just wanted to publicly thank and honor Kevin um, for his service on the Veterans Celebration Committee. I understand he's moved out of Hopkinton, so of course he can no longer be serving on a Hopkinton board. But um, Kevin is, I believe, still active duty military, mm -hmm. um, appeared at all of our veterans events in his, in his uniform, um, honoring our flag, um, honoring our town. And we were really privileged to have this this really fine young man who exemplifies 
um, what it is to be proud of America and, and proud of Hopkinton. And um, <coughs> it'll be hard to replace and very missed, but I do want to, again, give a special thank you to Kevin Nathan for his service on the Veterans Celebration Committee and um, thank him for his service to our country. And I'd like to piggyback on that <coughs> by saying just because he's not in town anymore, um, I'm on that Veterans Celebration Committee and he is everything that Claire said. Uh, he's enthusiastic, he's energetic, yes. and it's refreshing to see people from, from his generation, from the very younger generation, take such, a, a pr take such pride in, and, um, in the veterans and everything that they stand for. So even though he's not gonna be officially on the committee, I'm sure that he's still gonna be at every event that we have. He's a great kid, a great guy, <clears throat> and uh, you know, it's, it does stink losing a guy like that on the, uh, on the committee, but I'm sure that uh, just because he doesn't live within our zip code, he, he won't, his involvement won't stop, but it will have to stop officially. So thank you, Kevin, for everything that you've done. So, Chair, I entertain a motion to uh, approve, uh, uh, to accept the resignation of Kevin Nathan. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much, Kevin. Okay, now the Board of Selectmen um, will consider approving a proclamation to come <coughs> Columbus Day weekend 2017 as Hopkinton High School Alumni Weekend. Um, uh, would the uh, members of the class of 67 please come on up? Welcome. Want to move it up? Yeah, Let's absolutely. Up. <coughs> you guys went right to the picture. We were going to talk about you. Yeah, we're going to talk about you guys first. We're going to talk about you when we're done, though. But that's what I will. We'll do, the, we'll do that afterwards. So we have a proclamation here. Town of Hopkinton, we, the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen, Town of Hopkinton, Massachusetts, are pleased to congratulate the Hopkinton High School class of 1967. In Hopkinton, Massachusetts, a 1748 on its 50th reunion, the Board of Selectmen wishes to congratulate the members of the Hopkinton High School class of 1967 on this ver uh, special occasion and declare Columbus Day weekend uh, of 2017 of, as Hopkinton High School Alumni Weekend. Signed under our hand in the seal of the 26th day of September, John Catino, Chair, Claire Wright, Vice Chair, Todd Sestari, Brian Gurr, and Brendan Tedstone. Thank you very much. It's a, it's a pleasure to uh, present this to you guys. Actually, I'd like to come around. Yeah, let's go to the out this way. Statute of limitations, I guess they could admit to it, but it's they still probably not good form. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> okay. I had a cousin that was on that's on that class that was supposed to come tonight, but her her uh, brother in law passed away, so she couldn't make it. But <coughs> I know that she's here watching, so Anne Tedeschi, Flannery, Roberts, she's a name collector. Uh, <laughs> we missed you. I was looking forward to having a picture taken with you. So 
Okay, liaison appointment. The uh, Community Communications Committee. The Board of Selectmen will consider making a liaison appointment to the Community Communications Committee. Mr. Kamalo. Yes, um, this request comes through the school district. Uh, a committee <coughs> has been formed to look at specifically communication uh, in town on spe specific uh, significant issues and they have requested participation by the town manager as well as the board of selectmen. Okay. So is that a member of the uh, board of selectmen? Yes. They are looking for a liaison from the board. Okay. Is there anybody from the board that would... Can I just ask, yes. I, I don't quite understand. It's, you said on specific issues. Would this Is this just a general public relations position to whatever issue comes up be better communicated or when you say specific issues are there specific issues right now that they want addressed i'm still not quite un i still don't quite understand what the committee is supposed to do yes um i think the committee's work is based on the realization that one way to improve service delivery to the community is to improve communication between town entities town boards and civic organizations. That is the focus of the committee. So, is this so in terms of specific issues, I don't believe there's a specific issue that has been identified now. I think the committee is in its formative stage. They are still uh, learning from other entities that do this. Uh, and I believe a meeting is scheduled for this Friday where there's somebody from outside who will be coming to speak to this working group. Is there a charter or something that, that's, that about the community makeup and what, what it entails, how, number of meetings, et cetera, et cetera? At this point, the committee, I believe, is still in the formative stages. There is no specific detailed charge. What we received was a one-liner highlighting what we just covered now. Yeah. So this is being formed by the school committee, or no? I, I, I don't know specifically whether the, the idea came the from yes, here? yeah, came from the school committee or came from the superintendent. Do you know? Can you come? Can you, yeah, could you come yeah. up? Thanks. I was just thinking I'd never heard of this committee before when I was reading the agenda. <laughs> There's a reason. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just echo what Mr. Kamala has said. Um, so this is uh, some work that started really last year with Denise Hildreth and um, members of the Hawkington Diversity Group, as well as the Youth Commission, Dr. McLeod. And um, so Mina Barath, who is one of our new school committee members, has taken on sort of a liaison role from the school committee perspective about um, communications and improving proactive communications across the community. But she, so for example, the Senior Center in particular, but she's been working with this group as well. So for those of you who watched and enjoyed our meeting on Thursday, which I know is all seven of you, um, probably saw her presentation where she's just started to um, flesh out what they're gonna do. So uh, Norman's right, there isn't really a charge yet. That's something that they're working on or a mission statement that they're working on. They do have um, a consultant coming on Friday to um, help them with that process and so they just thought that it would be stronger rep representation across the community to have a member of the Board of Selectmen involved as well. So many of the issues that we're facing now affect us all. She has a very good diagram that looks like a fidget spinner that shows the triangle of responsibility right for our kids. So there's parents, there's community, and there's schools. And so the point is that if we're all working together, um, that you know, it's it's that much stronger a statement and a position for the kids in the community. I'm not sure I'm answering that. You guys right, well, see, my, my my confusion is mm -hmm. that that they're trying to form a committee and have a member of the board of selectmen on there to <coughs> to make it more substantive. But w what I what confused me is if, is it, if it's a liaison a, a position or if it's a voting position. The liaison position, you know, that like I'm on what we're each on Eight. anywhere from seven to nine liaisons, and um, not all of them, not all of them are voting. Many of them, right. as liaison, we report back in. We go when the chair asks. But if this is something that they, they need somebody to go to a lot of the meetings to make it a solid 
petition that, that that's something I think we have to really talk sure. about. Yeah, I understand that. I mean, and we, we have a similar structure. So right. this isn't a subcommittee of the school committee. They're not voting members, to my knowledge. Um, it's not a committee that's, you know, taking formal action on things. It's, it's just, I think, a, a kind of a coalition being built across the community. So what I would say is I don't think that it's a situation that you're being sworn into, but I think that they're asking you because they would like your participation. So it, as opposed to one that maybe you monitor and don't have to attend, I think they're hoping that somebody will be available. Does that fit with what your thought was, Norman, in yeah. your conversation? Yes, and in fact, what a better way to begin a process for improving communication than getting everybody to participate exactly. early in the process. And I think that's the opportunity that's being presented to the board now. And this would be year one of a multi-year traditional process where we all, whoever's on this committee is going to gather regularly, right? And they started this work last year, so you may remember there were several, at least two um, forums around diversity in the community that were hosted by, by this group of people. And um, so they're really just starting, they're expanding on that work and, um, and wanting to hear your voice, I think, as part of that work as well. Are there, are there resident members of the committee as well that are appointed? Um, I believe that, so I'm not on that committee, but um, what I remember is that there's a school committee member, there is the chair of the Youth Commission, there's Denise Heldress, there's Kathy McLeod, there's um, one or two people from the PTA, and beyond that, I can't answer your question. Yeah, actually, I'd like to table this one for until the next meeting, only because I want to see who does the appointing, what's going on, you know, and just to get a little more information on it, if I'm, if I, if I, if I me personally. Yeah. Suggestion, just building upon that, with your permission, Mr. Chair, perhaps you and I attend the meeting and find out. Okay. On Friday, <laughs> and then we'll report to the. I think it's at to the board. Eleven. Yeah. yeah. Does that sound right? We need to we need to yeah. add some bureaucracy on to this before we can make yes, a decision. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they'll love that. <laughs> That's just what they're looking for. I think it's around at eleven. I think it, or maybe noon. It's in the morning on Friday. But that's yeah. a great. I, I will because be that cuts out that cuts out uh, uh, like four at least three or four members well, of the board. Well, that's just that's just this meeting hearing. Yeah. The, I believe it's Visions is the mm -hmm. company that's coming to talk to them. Mm -hmm. So I, I'll be there for the same reason, uh, mm -hmm. just to listen and, and hear more about what the work okay. is going to be. But yeah. okay, so let's take uh, let's let's say just take no no action at this point. We'll hold off on this one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What's All right. Answer? Yes. That's Temporary alcohol license. Board of Selectmen consider approving a special temporary alcohol license requested by Laura Barry on behalf of the Hopkinton Public Library Foundation, a novel affair. A fundraiser for the renovation and expansion of the library to be held on October 28, 2017 from 7.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. at the Hopkinton Public Library. Isn't this where it all started? <laughs> <laughs> this is where that whole alcohol <laughs> licensing stuff started. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it's finally coming to fruition. Finally. Excellent. It opened up a big box of worms and everything else, Pandora's box, but we got through town meeting and all that. Thank you. Come on up and. Good and evening, Kate Davenport. I'm a board member of the Hospital Public Library Foundation. Excellent. Thanks for coming. Okay, uh, Mr. Kamalo, do you want to take this one? Yes, um, the the town manager's office received the application, uh, circulated the application to the town's review department, and I believe as of today, all outstanding issues have now been resolved. Excellent. Yeah, I saw the last couple of uh, emails. Does, does anybody have any questions? I'm looking forward to the event. Uh, I don't know if anybody else here has purchased their tickets yet. I know I have. Um, sounds like it's going to be a great time. Um, I'm just wondering the, uh, I mean, I'm assuming that ticket sales uh, are going toward the ongoing uh, effort to raise money. Yes, for this. they are. We've I'm wondering how close are we to we the goals. We hope and expect <laughs> to exceed $1 million raised at a novel affair. Um, we are very close to $1 million, having received another $10,000 gift today from Middlesex Savings Bank, um, in addition to their already generous gift of $75,000. So we're continuing the fundraising effort, 
and we hope and expect to exceed that one million dollar commitment uh, at the event. Great, yeah. awesome. Excellent. How many uh, how many people are you expecting at the event? If it's a sellout, Let's we assume. are hoping uh, to uh, sell out somewhere between two hundred and two hundred fifty people. Mm -hmm. We are halfway there. Uh, I was going to say, ticket, ticket sales, sales just opened up last week. Yeah. Open for about a week, so Great. Uh, we expect to sell out uh, for the event. And Do you know if Ben Palaco bought a ticket yet? Ben <laughs> 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 he is being honored for his great work and support of the library that evening, so uh, his ticket is complimentary. No, I wouldn't let him off that easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm good with everything but that part. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Yeah, I, I just have one question. Um, I notice it, the application includes um, three bartenders, and I'm just questioning: Are your bartenders going to be provided through this special occasion servers company? Yes, they are. That's a company out of Holliston uh -huh. um, that provides professional bartending services. Um, their bartenders are TIP certified. Uh, they provide additional liquor liability in addition to what we've already secured as liquor liability. Um, for the foundation and for the town. Okay, I, I just wondered because I know in our documents it included the TIP certification of a couple of servers, uh, uh, Kathleen Sestavillis, I think, and a Christian Tornafoglio, and then the third one was Laura Barry, which I, Laura has been such a centerpiece of the foundation, I thought they could can't be counting Laura as one of the three bartenders. I think she'll be a little busy, but I'm assuming there are other, I'm not quite sure why I wish she was included in that, but the, but the, there will be TIP certified bartenders totally devoted to yes, the so serving yes. function. Yes. And my only question is the, um, the event contract is capped out at 200. If we're planning on going to 250, we should make sure that, that the paperwork is set yes, up. Yes, so um, we have, uh, paid a deposit um, up to 200 people and we have the ability with special occasion surfers to add an additional bartender okay, if we so need to um, okay. and to uh, increase our um, our guest list to 250. Uh, uh, on that, will there be any pay at the door or is it all uh, advance purchase? There will be no uh, ticket sales at the door. Everyone uh, will have purchased their ticket in advance okay. uh, of the event. So that is how you can comply with the occupancy limits that the fire chief spoke of to make sure you know exactly how many people are in the building. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the special temporary alcohol license for the Hockington Public Library Foundation, a novel affair event on October 28th. Second. Is there, is there a second? Second. Excellent. Thank you. Any further? Oh, yes. Mr. Chair, oh, sorry. there's a second vote requested, uh, namely the waiver from the fee. Oh, boy, giving away a free ticket there. And <laughs> a fee for the special license? Yes. My motion includes a waiver for the fee of the license. For the okay. license. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And is there a, yes. Excuse me. Is there a separate vote on the entertainment license for the... Uh, Jazz trio, or is that assumed under the special? Well, it's on the license application, so okay. I don't. It's on the bottom line. It doesn't say. Uh, I, I suggest, Mr. Chair, group? that could be a separate vote, just just in case. Okay, Chair, we a motion for a um, an entertainment license for the to be attached to the temporary alcohol license for a three-piece jazz. What will be the Bands. instruments? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say quartet, but that's not three. Do we have to designate the instruments? No, <laughs> uh, Okay. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks Thank for coming. You. All right. Uh, Common Victor's license, entertainment license, Hopkinton Spoon. DBA The Spoonery, 1 Lumber Street. The Board of Selectmen will consider approving a Common Victor entertainment license requested by Samantha Prescott for an ice cream shop, walk-up window, and seating inside of eight guests. The hours of operation requested at 12 p.m. to no uh, noon to 9 p.m. Monday through Sunday. Recorded music will be played. Okay. Uh, Billy, you want to come on up? How you doing? Good. 
Bill. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Bill. How you doing? Hey, thanks Good for opening the spoonery. Hey, <laughs> thanks for bringing the spoon back, too. Yeah. We love it. So pretty simple, you know, just um, you know, serving ice cream. The uh, entertainment has to kind of loosely you know, play a, a few tunes, but no no live entertainment, nothing like that. Oh, you're going to be just want to have it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'll tell a few jokes. <laughs> okay, great. I'll tell a few myself. Yeah. Any questions, anybody? <clears throat> I just wondered what is different from the spoonery that's already opened with the ice cream that's been opened this past year. This is this is an administrative request. It came to our attention that the <coughs> board had not acted on the common Vic license. Understood. Well, in that case, I have no questions. I say bring on the ice cream. All right. Okay, the chair went in a motion to approve the uh, license for the spoonery. So moved. Second. Thank All you those in much. favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. Thanks, Commodore. See you, Bill. Okay, volunteer recognition. The Board of Selectmen will recognize the contributions and volunteer service of the members of the Charter Review Committee. Pam Wexlax, Rick Flannery, Michelle Murdoch, Gene Birchman, our own Todd Sestari, <coughs> Kurt Cooperwriter, and Beth Hurley. Everybody, come on up. Okay. And, and Mr. Oh, Chair, yes. yeah. <laughs> with, <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. With, with your permission, it, I, I'm respectfully asking that we ask uh, Mr. Um, Bob Levinson to introduce the recipient. Bob, yeah, come on up. Who's this guy? <laughs> I've seen him around. Yeah. Hi. Hey, Bob. I want to thank uh, Mr. Kamal and Ms. Lazarus, Lazarus for their efforts in getting this off the ground. <coughs> you said a number of months ago, you said uh, we've reached the finish line. Actually, it's a starting line to have formal recognition of the town. So yeah. I urge all our, uh, uh, our viewers and everybody else in town to use this opportunity to recognize this spirit of volunteerism and hobby. It's, it's awesome. And it's, I think it's represented by this group here, putting countless hours uh, to culminate in uh, the opportunity to have an auditorium full of people criticize what they did. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I just did this incredible amount of work. I thought it was great to start off with this group to recognize the form of so Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. I promised Sarah that I'd take pictures. So yeah, we got you. Go on, just let's, let's throw some accolades at them because it was one heck of a process. Well, I, I have some accolades because not only did they put in a huge amount of work, but the amount of detail and the understanding of every last word of that charter. I, I, I was continually amazed when one of the members would be asked any kind of a question and they knew that down to every sentence and every comma and um, they were the most thorough. Um, dedicated uh, board you could ever ask for. So I don't know that I would have had the patience and the perseverance that any of these people had, but I really take my hat off to you. All right. So uh, would you want to do what I would call that? So can I just make, yes. this is rather awkward, can I make yes. a comment? Yes. Um, should I sit while I oh, maybe to the mic here? So change is never easy. And uh, change in Hopkinton is never easy uh, times two, right? We've seen that many times in, in many different things we've all been involved in. But I thought the change that you <coughs> folks brought forward to the town to consider, uh, the change you brought forward and the way you did it was really well done. Change is hard no matter what it is. But the way you guys managed the change process and worked everybody through and walked everybody through you know, the things you were considering, um, uh, I was really impressed with it. And I was surprised that there wasn't a bigger fuss <laughs> over some of the stuff that went, went through. Um, but I think it's all really good. Uh, uh, you know, art, the article was great. Everything that went through you know, at the town meeting went, went really well. Um, but the change you brought about was good, and the way you did it was great. So thank you for your time. I know it took a lot of time, an awful lot of patience, and a lot of good listening skills. Uh, and I think uh, the community is better off because of it. So thank you very much. Okay, anything? Anything? Okay, let's go up. I'll just, I'll just add that. Oh, oh here we process. go. <laughs> <laughs> going into this process, I was going to really point out that uh, the way the charter is written up, 
it's that one of a review needs to be done at least once every 10 years. There was nothing limiting us. You know, saying that we couldn't do it more than once every 10 years. After going through it, I know why we only go through it every 10 years. <laughs> 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 it's the last 10 years. Thank you very much. Thank you always. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Thanks for all your help. Thanks for all your help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations, right? We've got some young planners here. We've got some young planners. They went to a couple meetings. They did. Uh, future police chiefs. <laughs> so this one's going to be given. I know these little guys weren't around when you were promoted throughout the police department for pinning and things like that. So it probably would mean a lot for you to have your, your little guys to come up and hand you your. says that um, Tom Hopkins certifies that, that the above have contributed significantly to Hopkins' quality of life through his or her volunteer efforts as recognized by the board selectmen and therefore awarding a certificate of appreciation given this 26th day of September 2017. Again, thank you very much. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. Thank you very much. this one a few times. 110 Grill, Pop 10 LLC, change of manager for the general on-premise all-alcohol restaurant. They're not here. And they're not here? Okay, the board selectmen will consider approving a change of manager for 110 Grill, 1 Lumber Street, requested by Kevin Erickson. The change of manager from Michael Spots, the current manager to Gene A. Ryan Jr. is being requested due to the current manager being promoted to a new location. The required TIP certification course uh, to be taken on Mr. Ryan's schedule for 10 4 17. Hmm. What does that mean that going to a new location is a promotion? Maybe he's going from a yeah. general manager to a double, manager. double general he's manager. Got, Robert's got a bunch of restaurants now. Yeah. He's doing very well. Okay. Claire, I see you have a question. Um. <coughs> Well, the only, the only thing I noticed in this is just tiny, tiny little detail is one of the forms here is an entertainment license application, which uh, was signed but left blank. So I, I suspect we can probably move ahead with things, but I would like just, just for the purposes of a complete application that should probably be filled out. Um, I think it just refers to, you know, no, no nudity, no live dancing, or, or whatever. But uh, might ask the applicant to go back and just complete that as a matter of record. I think all they have is televisions going. Correct. Yeah. No. I, I just you know if there's an application and someone signed it, you shouldn't just sign a blank page. You should you should fill it out and say no on the on the questions. But it it, it should be completed just for just for a complete record. But that doesn't need to hold anything up. That's just a just a detail I'm pointing out. You okay with that, Mr. Kamala? Yes. Okay, so the chair will entertain a uh, motion to uh, approve the uh, change of manager for uh, one ten bill. So bill. moved. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Any further any further discussion? So where is the applicant? I can't remember the last time we approved a change of manager without meeting the manager. The applicant. Yeah. 
I love the one tang grill and Robert Walker, the owner, but we have a process I think that typically requires that they be here, correct? I think we should follow that past practice. Okay, so you want to table this one until the next meeting? Yes. Then uh, he's not passing the tips uh, until 10 4 anyway, so. When's our next meeting? Next week. 10 3. So we can put it on for 10 3, right? But I do think it would be nice to meet the new manager. Okay. Right? We'll put this one. Yes. Oh, does the motion yeah. need to be withdrawn? Do you have to withdraw that? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. Withdrawing so, that? Mm -hmm. Withdraw okay. the second. Withdraw the motion. Okay. I withdraw the motion. I withdraw the second. All right, then we'll move on to the Marathon uh, Elementary School update. Of course, we'll hear an update on the Marathon Elementary School construction. How you doing? Thank you. Gentlemen. Hello. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with me, uh, my name is Joe Markey, Chair of the Elementary School Building Committee. Honored to be here tonight to give you an update on our construction progress. Uh, joining me here is uh, Bob Tucker. He, Bob is the on-site construction manager. He works for us. He's the owner's project manager, Compass. Um, I also want to uh, extend our thanks to Colin Antonio, who's been a great construction partner for us, and uh, DRA, who uh, remains our design architect. Also, though, I, though I'm here representing the ESBC, uh, I want to uh, especially thank Mike Shepard. Mike attends the weekly on-site project meetings with the entire construction design team. Uh, Pam Waxlax, as you know, is on our committee. She's just honored for the uh, Charter Commission. She's also our uh, hawk on our budget and uh, keeps us on track there. And uh, Rob Nickerson, as you know, is doing a great job with the communications and outreach. We've got a real pulse on what matters to the community and how to communicate. From the school committee, John Graziano and Jen Devlin, uh, prior to Jen, Kelly Knight, do a great job looking out for the interest of the district, ensuring we have input from the school department. John Weaver, who uh, designs and constructs uh, large facilities as part of his day job, uh, brings much uh, appreciated expertise. And Brendan Tedstone from the Selectmen, who uh, serves a very important role. Uh, he often pretends to ask stupid questions just to make sure that everybody uh, else who is afraid to ask uh, gets the answer that they need. And we appreciate all those very good questions that Brendan brings to the committee. Thanks for the, thanks for the, thanks for the I appreciate that you <laughs> give me more credit than <laughs> I'm pretending to ask those questions. <laughs> uh, so without further ado, we first I want to uh, uh, let you know anytime any of you as a group or individually would like to visit the site, you're welcome. Uh, Bob is there every day from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Anytime we'll just schedule a, a day or two ahead would help. Uh, but in lieu of that, we brought some pictures tonight, and um, I've asked Bob to uh, walk us through the site. Um, Mr. Chair, if I could interrupt for one minute, please. Sure. Mr. Markey, in your presentation, there might be a certain facet of the project that involves some kind of technology that would go on the roof. Yeah. And I'd ask that you hold that. Any discussion, mention of that until the end. And then if you're going to discuss that, please give me a wink. I'm going to recuse myself and get up and walk off. Yeah, you know, we don't plan to, but if you'd like to, we can discuss. But we, yeah. we don't plan Thank to. You. So thanks for the, the heads up on the process. I wasn't planning on even talking about that. Yeah. Don't but mention the, uh, where we The main reason we're here is we recently passed an important milestone. We're now past 50% complete on construction. Uh, so to tell that story in pictures, uh, Bob, why don't you walk us through? All right. Uh, first picture you have before you is uh, as you enter from Hayden Road. This will be the first view that you get of the school, uh, minus the construction trailers and uh, a lot of the construction materials. Um, the school is set up as a, as a, in a T-shape with on the, on the left-hand side is what we refer to as the B-wing. The section coming out towards us on the right-hand side is the A-wing and C-wing is out, be out behind that. And that contains the gym, the cafetorium, uh, boiler rooms uh, and mechanical spaces of, of the facility. Um, next, please. Uh, here we are looking at the um, A wing, looking northward towards the gymnasium. Um, <clears throat> get a good a good coloration of the uh, the masonry on the exterior of the school. Uh, it's hard to see, but the windows are in place. Uh, the windows on this part of the school. Are, uh, have a red frame, so it does make it a little bit difficult to see. Uh, and as you, you may remember or may not, uh, we have windows uh, 
with a red frame on the A wing and on the B wing they have a green frame. Same window, just different colored frames. Um, <clears throat> next please. Uh, this is a uh, storefront assembly that that's being installed in the uh, A wing at the end of the A wing um, for e primary egress. Uh, that will that's just the aluminum frame portion there. The next part that will be going in to make the building weather tight will be the glass. Uh, and we're expecting to have the building weather tight by the end of October. Uh, that And weather tight is to a point where we can put in temporary heat and heat the inside of the building to continue working throughout the winter. Next, please. <clears throat> this is um, a good picture of the... Uh, the windows that are in the building. Uh, the apparatus you see soaking the window uh, was not just for cleaning purposes, it was actually part of a window test that uh, we run on the uh, window installation. And the window test is broken into two parts. It's uh, both a water test as well as a vacuum or an air in leakage test to uh, verify and, and confirm the integrity of the installation of the window. Make sure all the all the seals are working properly, they're tight, we don't get any water in leakage, and from that we can uh, assess the, the, the window installation. We'll, we'll be doing a similar test on the uh, storefront and curtain wall assemblies as well to confirm those. Next, please. <clears throat> this is uh, an end pod of the B-Wing. It was in this pod that we added the uh, four classroom addition. Um, that came to us last winter uh, and one thing I would like to say about that that addition we were we were all very fortunate on the timing of, of this from the standpoint that we were able to put the foundation crew and the site the excavation crews into a, uh, a workaround plan uh, that, that fit perfectly uh, so it ended up we weren't digging extra extra foundation ditches, we weren't pouring concrete or setting rebar that we had to take out and throw away. Uh, we did it so that we were able to stop at, 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 a, good, at a good spot. Uh, we were able to get the, these crews to work on interior footings and foundation work, and then once we had the okay, we, within a day we were right back, right on track, finishing off the foundation work. So. Um, it, it was really a seamless addition to the uh, overall construction of the building. <clears throat> this is, uh, some of you may have seen a, about a 17,000 cubic yard mound that we had out in the property separating the school from the EMC park. Um, th that was a picture of what was left of it uh, at the beginning of the week. And at this point we have, we're in, we're preparing the uh, that plain that plain field area, uh, and hope to be laying sod within by the end of this week or the first of next week. So we're coming right along well. Um, this is one of the bioretention ponds. Uh, as you can see, we had hydro seeded along the edges of it. Um, that grass is sprouting up just as nice as can be. Uh, they may even have to mow it this year, uh, <laughs> which I would love to see. Uh, but part of this was to get these grasses, grass areas established early so that when school does open, they'll be that much stronger and, and ready, for, ready for use. <clears throat> Here's another shot of the, on, along the entranceway coming in, we've been installing uh, granite curbing over the last uh, couple of weeks and we'll be continuing that for the next week or so. <clears throat> um, some of the rocks that you see along the uh, along the edge of the curb are uh, from the original stone walls that uh, crisscross the property. That's a typical classroom. Uh, this happens to be in the A wing. Um, drywall is all all installed. Uh, no mud. Uh, you can see the ductwork has started to be installed in the ceiling space. Next. And this is a, an adjacent classroom, same area. <clears throat> the walls are all mudded out. Um, 
the ductwork and the piping that's insulated there has all been tested before we allow them to install insulation. So they've, they've installed insulation uh, and to take that picture to today, uh, all those walls have been sanded and they were, we're actually getting ready to have a, a backlog of, of area to start painting. So the, the building is coming along very nicely. Uh, this is the hallway in the A-wing on the second floor. <coughs> uh, just normal construction activities going on in here. Um, some more of the upper space, uh, the ductwork and piping that, that fill the upper space. <coughs> this is an electric room in the A-wing. It's a sub-panel sub area um, for control of the uh, power usages needs uh, in the A-wing. This is your boiler room. Boilers are in, in place, uh, covered in plastic. Circulating pumps for both hot and cold water are all uh, in place. Uh, the uh, drive mechanisms for those, for those uh, pumps are all hanging on the walls. Next step in that area will be to start piping that out and uh, going forward. Um, this is the second floor of the foyer area, the main entry. <clears throat> um, still obviously a lot of drywall that needs to be done. Elevator is, uh, will not be installed until we have permanent power to the building, which we're expecting shortly. Um, but this, this will be a, a very bright, um, sun-filled uh, area as you enter the school. Next. Where well, that's it. Awesome. Overall, we're saying we're about 55% complete. We're probably, our original substantial completion was the end of July. We're looking right now at uh, uh, a May-June time frame to be, uh, to be in that same position. So we are uh, making good on schedule. We've been blessed with good weather and, and tremendous uh, subcontractors uh, throughout the entire process. They worked hard all last winter, which bought us a lot of time. Uh, and as the subcontractors have come on site, they've all been very cooperative, working together extremely well, better than I've seen on many projects that, I, that I've worked on. Um, and, and I can't say enough about the entire team. They've really been top notch. Thanks, Bob. And I, and I want to extend that to the selectmen. Thank you for your leadership. As you know, projects go well when, they, when it's sort of relying from the top and across and down, and uh, that's what's happened in this case. So thank you for getting us off on the right track uh, several years ago and for staying engaged, and uh, especially for getting us through that uh, town meeting in January uh, to get us to where we are today. And as Bob mentioned, we're still officially saying uh, June, July next year, but currently we're tracking a little ahead of that for uh, completion of the building. Joe. Yeah. The one person <coughs> you left out to say thanks was uh, we left out John Mosier for his work before I came along. Absolutely, yeah. So. And uh, everyone who's been involved along the way through the different gener generations of the board. Yeah, uh, Ben Palaco, John Mosier, and, and yourself yep. carrying the torch now. Yeah, thank you. So I love going up there and kind of being the antagonist and uh, <coughs> kind of mixing it up a little bit with you guys. But uh, it has been, <coughs> it has been uh, pretty interesting and eye-opening for me. Uh, it's an amazing uh, machine that you guys have going there, and you guys are doing a great job. So to all the people from town that have any questions about it, it really is its going wonderfully. I say that as a selectman, I say that as a member of the elementary school building committee, and I say that most importantly as a citizen of the town. So it is really going well. Thank you. Yeah. So I have, a, I have a question, actually, to Mr. Kamalo. Now, the, the, the Irvine to Darrow uh, group uh, recommended that uh, we, to the Board of Selectmen, that we go ahead with the parking lot, and I believe that we, as Board of Selectmen, last year we voted to go ahead with the parking lot. Does that still have to go through town meeting? Is there any way that we can squeeze in any of the... Any of the scale, any of the scale to the parking lot was not for the buses at this time. There wasn't a need for it. But but do we not do that in time? The storage, the, yeah, the bus parking. Do we get anything? Is that uh, there was a specific recommendation from the Evan Todaro Working Group? I don't believe the selectmen acted on the appropriation that is required to move the parking lot forward. 
you know, let's get that on the agenda to see if we can if we can help that out at all while the uh, while the construction crews are still there. If there's any way that we can. Um, Isn't that a is school committee is issue? Why is that Irish? Because we have the, we own the land. But the school committee doesn't want to park the buses there. Yeah, they do. Do they? Then why is I don't understand. Something's not right. Oh, no. no it's just a... Yeah, we're uh, on the elementary school building committee. We're happy to partner with you on any related projects. So you just need to understand what the requirements are, and we'll bring mm -hmm. it back to the team to see what's possible. Okay, great. Okay. Thanks, John. But thank you. Uh, and if uh, any questions, uh, please contact me. Uh, any member <coughs> of the public can do the same. And contact anyone you know on the committee, as well as uh, send an email to schoolproject at hopkintonma.gov. Yes, sure. Can I go cut through a couple things? Sure. Um, Bob, thanks for coming tonight. Joe probably knows this. I built, I shouldn't say I, I've been involved in building probably 200 schools in my 30 years in the construction business, so bear with me a little bit here. Um, how's the draining over there? Is it draining pretty well? Very well. Because it's kind of like a flat area of town. It's like on the other side, it gets pretty wet. Are we yeah. at grade there? Do we have anything below grade? We have, a, we have quite a bit below grade. Are the boilers below grade? No, I'm sorry. The building itself is all above grade. Okay. We have a lot of uh, drainage systems that that are below grade. For example, underneath the under the parking lots, we've got you know your, your typical Coltec system right. uh, under the two parking lots. But everything's so far with what we've seen in rain and everything else, everything's working good. Yep. Okay. Great. As intended. So then the building, all the HVAC, all that stuff we were looking at there, everything's above grade. We don't have a basement per se. No. Okay. No basement. Great. Do we need sumps anywhere for any reason? Not that I've seen. Okay. Okay. Um, and then, how about how are we doing with change notices on this so so far? Just general trade, sub trade, change Very notices. Good. Have there been Very many? Good. I think we're up to change order six that has been approved by the by the building committee at this point, and I think we're working on seven for. Yep. in the next month or so. Does something. that include all the trades or is that just coming from you guys to the owners? That's all the trades. Total when we seven. put together a, a, a change order, it's from, it represents all of the trades on the site. Okay. So nothing crazy on the trades, the spec and all is pretty good? No. Nope. That's great. That's a very it's low, <coughs> very well managed number. <coughs> so it, as I say, we've been extremely fortunate from that standpoint uh, with the subcontractors and, as, and with Paul Antonio. Uh, they've They've taken a, a very good, strong role as leaders and uh, uh, brought the subs right along, and they're and they're all um, supporting one another very nicely. Great, great. How about a boulder field on site? Anything like that? You didn't do anything like that? Did you have to bury anything? No, we didn't bury anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going really well. I mean, I, I think it's going fast. To your point, Joe, it seems like it's going quicker than what I anticipated, what I've seen in. All the ones I've been on, maybe mm -hmm. it's because I'm on them. They go slower or something. I don't know, <laughs> um, but I think it's going really well from looking at it. You know, from 10,000 feet out or up. But uh, uh, I'm excited for it. It's going to be a great education facility, and I think you're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it looks it looks great, and thank you for your hard work. Um, while I have Joe right here, I'm going to ask you just one question, and I don't know if this is in your purview or not, because your focus has been on the actual building. Mm -hmm. um, so this may not be details you know. Um, but I wondered about the actual move, when the move process happens from Center School, do you happen to know if uh, it has been budgeted both in costs and in human resources? Um, for the disposal of whatever is in center school that is left behind, or are they simply going to take <coughs> what they want and leave the rest in the school for the town to deal with? Uh, yeah, we, we my, made, yeah. My experience has been they usually take what's what they want and what's good. Correct. Um, and they're you, normally teachers and administration are, you know, establish a list of, here's what we, what we have for that's coming in new, and then if you have something that needs to be added to it that's, that's good, then fine. If it's not good, you know, it, it would stay sure. behind. As far as the budgeting, some of that, I'm sure, I believe has been budgeted. 
I don't know about the, the um, removal of anything that's left behind them. In fact, I think, aren't we getting to the phase soon where one of the, one of the next pieces of uh, work is to get to that facility and equipment planning piece of it? Uh, actually, we have started meetings yeah. on that um, that we usually uh, shepherd initially. Uh, and there is some of the uh, new furniture that's coming in down to the center school, and I believe it's going to one half of the gymnasium area for viewing, testing, like this, yeah. like kind of. We'll try to get you a more definitive answer from uh, the school department. Okay, okay thank you. Um, just because as we begin to look at repurposing the center school, that is a question that we'll need to know. Is this something, is this an expense the town is going to have to assume or whether disposal of unwanted furniture and various things in the center school has been included as part of the, as part of the process? So if you can find out anything, yeah, yeah, we'll would find appreciate it. I'll, I'll, I'll raise the question in the morning. It is yeah. what I can do, but, uh, and I don't know. So yeah. I'm going to ask us at a school committee meeting also. Right, right. Check on that one too. Mr. Sistai. Nothing yet. Thanks, guys. All right. Mr. Thanks. Kamalo. Thank you. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And thanks to Norman also. Norman is, serves on the committee, so a lot of extra time. Thank you, Norman. Yeah. Thank you, John. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, fellas. Yeah. See you soon. <clears throat> Okay, is it, oh, here's a good one. Public library update. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, 26.2. I forgot that. 26.2 Foundation will update the Board of Selectmen on its civic activities and accomplishments. Thank you, sir. Look at all this stuff. I like that lapel pen, sir. It's very nice. Thank you, Mr. Joa. Did you see uh, Sinead yesterday? Did I see who? Sinead at the race. No. I was running around taking pictures. Counting how many times we can see people on the course. That's what you do at races, is you run around. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Practice Mr. Kilduff. Yes, sir. <coughs> Welcome. Thank, Thank you for coming to bring, for <coughs> bring us this update. You, oh, beautiful, you get it up you on know, the screen. I, I, I um, very appreciative of the fact that we could find the time to do this. I understand what your schedules are like, as, uh, and I appreciate you being flexible to fit these updates in a, on pretty much an annual basis now. Uh, you know, I think Hopkins' relationship to um, the marathon, you might be shocked, and I'm about ready to say this, but might be in a bit of a rut. Uh, and if nothing else, a little complacent. And by that I mean um, there's a tremendous opportunity still uh, for this community as it relates to the marathon because the, the Boston Marathon really presents a platform for us to communicate um, and really brand our community. Uh, it, it's phenomenal. So I want to just uh, want to go through some of these slides quickly. The, you, you have in front of you a document that, uh, that spells out the, 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 uh, the mission of the foundation. We've been through that before. And then the next slide um, really talks about how we do, uh, really do our pro programming uh, and how we take advantage of opportunities and where our focus is. But one of the things we've learned uh, is that we have the potential to um, impact uh, the sport of marathoning and the brand of this community, both not just locally, but regionally, nationally, and internationally. And I, I, I think through the programs that we'll go through pretty quickly, uh, I think we can prove that. Uh, this, is, this is one of the things that became apparent uh, about three weeks ago when Chairman Catino uh, arranged for a meeting with uh, the Boston Athletic Association officials uh, the chairman of the Hopkins and Marathon Committee and the 26.2 Foundation. I've been involved in the marathon since 1980, and I can honestly tell you it's one of the best uh, meetings related to the marathon I've ever participated in. Uh, it was, it, it gave us an opportunity to talk about local projects like the Downtown Corridor Project and some of the other, some of the other building, uh, oper building operations that are going on in the community. The BAA obviously is concerned about the main street. 
But the, the, once we covered that, uh, the subject turned to a much more broader discussion about what could be. Uh, and that's what became encouraging. But if you look, you know, I'm, I'm fond of saying that there's more to the marathon than running 26.2 miles. We know that in this community, in large part because of the work of the public safety people in the, in the marathon committee. But as you start to put the pieces together, uh, it gets much bigger. And there are two, two uh, can I just go back one, Mike? Uh, there are two elements on the bottom, partners in uh, the growing global network that becomes our potential, I think. But let me give you a quick s snapshot of what we're doing this quarter, where we're spending our time and energy. We have to, we're a nonprofit 501c3. We have a, an annual meeting that we have to conduct. We'll do that. Uh, I'm, ex I'm, I'm very excited. I know Brian was there yesterday. Uh, the first phase of the cross country course that you all endorsed a year ago is now complete. The middle school ran their competition there yesterday. The most, th there were two things that were really exciting for me. One, as a spectator, you could see uh, the students six times during the race. And th the more exciting and heartwarming part was they, they, part of the course runs by some of the athletic fields down below. And the, it was, a, I think, a JV soccer team mm. stopped what they were doing to cheer on their classmates. That's why, that's one of the reasons we wanted to do a cross country course behind that high school. So the collaboration and cooperation between the coaches is really phenomenal. I don't know, Brian, how many people would you say were there less, adults, parents? There had to be a couple hundred. I mean, there was at least 100 runners, so maybe three or 400 parents. I mean, it was great, it was a great day. It's pretty, it was really pretty cool. phenomenal. Hot, hot, it was great. Uh, last spring, uh, this community, uh, not only extended a welcome, but was extremely helpful to Catherine Switzer. Uh, she's coming to town uh, in October for the sole purpose of thanking the community for the kind of support that we gave her. You'll be hearing more about that. The uh, Bobby Gibbs sculpture uh, is something that we've, we've launched. Uh, Bobby is the first woman to run the Boston Marathon. She is a sculptor. Uh, we're working with a group of people, and we can come back to that one a little later. Uh, we just uh, signed an agreement with HCAM. Uh, uh, we're now an official partner, underwriter of HCAM, but the trick for us is we can now take our programming and we have a vehicle to push it out nationally and internationally. There's a great deal of interest in what we're doing, so if we have a monthly program, we can take that, push it out through YouTube and through their networks, which is, it greatly extends, extends our reach. Uh, we're involved with the Marine Corps Marathon. Uh, we, we uh, through, with uh, Dimitri's help, supply the wreaths, uh, gold, silver, and bronze wreaths for the Marine Corps Marathon. And the Athens Marathon is the basis for our relationship in Greece. And then finally, uh, two weeks ago, because of our work, because of the fact that the Kiriakidi sculpture is in Hopkinton, we've been invited to Cyprus uh, to participate with the president of Cyprus in their Olympic Committee in a celebration of the life of Stelianos Karyakidis. That again gives us an opportunity to expend, extend our reach. The programs for next year, we can go down, we'll spend as much time as, as any of you want on this, but one of the things we've learned is we have done some good programs. We, this community, for example, that art contest, the reading marathon, uh, we let, and when I said a little rut, that's what I meant. We, we let that slip. We own that. Uh, so we've now re-engaged and started discussions both with the school department uh, and, and uh, after the, the gala, uh, the, the library gala, we'll, we'll go back and knock on their door again, but they're very willing to listen and, and speak with us. But those are the kind of things that we're looking at relating to next year's marathon. And then finally, these are the bigger ones the bigger opportunities. Uh, you recall several years ago, we had four, uh, five Girl Scouts create a Girl Scout patch. Uh, I found that the Girl Scouts need a little reminder about that, uh, and we're gonna go back and do that and reinstitute that pack, that, uh, that patch. The Bobby Gibbs sculpture is uh, pretty direct. Um, you might guess uh, that if there's gonna be a sculpture uh, of someone like her, I would, I'd vote to have it in Hopkinton. Not on the common, but uh, uh, in Hopkinton. Uh, and we're really interested in getting your support because uh, that's gonna move forward. 
the assist the, uh, assist the library. We started talking with, with the new director about eventually finding an area where we could, we could uh, place uh, marathon books. There's tons of them. They've already got a, a, a substantial collection, but we want to do a little better job and in, in, uh, in increase that. Uh, the stone marker, we're in possession of a, of a piece of marble that comes from the, uh, the quarry from which the marble uh, of the Parthenon was, was taken. Uh, and we own that, that's, that's Hopkinton's. And we need to think about a way to, to really feature that. Again, a, a, a little bit in the future, based on our schedule and what we've got on our plate right now. Uh, this Olive Branch Initiative, um, If you just step back and take a deep breath for a minute, if you think about what's going on everywhere, globally, this olive branch is a big deal. Uh, people forget that on the seal in the United States, the eagle is grasping olive branches. Uh, we're, we have access to olive branches from Marathon Greece, uh, and we want to position, again, Hopkinton as the entry point for that uh, and spread that nationally. Uh, Spirit of the Marathon uh, sculpture at mile one. Uh, probably have to take a look at moving that. Um, there's some interest, we understand, of some expansion at Western Nurseries. If anything, we'll move it a little closer to the starting line. Again, staying on private property. Uh, and then finally, uh, I'll be knocking in the door of the town manager soon because we believe uh, that we have the possibility, the opportunity to create a team inspire um, involving the runners who run for this town, for the various charities in town, to create a team concept uh, that, that, uh, that's gonna help them raise money and is gonna, again, increase our brand. Mm -hmm. uh, and then finally, uh, you would be disappointed if I didn't have a request, uh, and we do, uh, and would very much like the selectman to consider, one, endorsing the mission of the 26.2 Foundation, which you have in the past, uh, offer Hopkinton as a location for the Roberta Gibbs sculpture. Continue uh, to support the creation of the International Marathon Center. Uh, encourage the 26.2 Foundation's involvement and expansion in non-logistic stuff. Uh, we, have a, we have a marathon committee here that does a good job. They deal with the logistics along with public safety, but we're, we think we can add value by working uh, in non-logistical areas to spread our, our marathon footprint. And then finally, as you did last year, support the foundations received Boston Marathon charity entries. Um, I say it all the time, and I, I you know, it, I, 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 I get emotional about this because never once have I come before the Board of Selectmen and all of you where, I, where the foundation has, and personally have not been received with respect and dignity, and, uh, and I really appreciate that uh, a lot. We think we're on the cusp of doing bigger and better things, and I think if, we, if, if there's anything we need to do, to, to do is to be more aggressive, quite frankly, and to take our brand and push it out. And, and it's, the, it's, it's that pace, that, if you excuse the marathon term, it's that pace. We, we have to throw in a surge here, but that surge has to, has to sustain itself long term. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to, happy to respond to them. Start with the runner. Uh, I, always great stuff, Tim. <coughs> and I'm all for continuing to build the brand of Hopkinton and running and fitness and health and well-being and all that around um, the marathon and what you folks are doing. I saw where you talked about, or at least in the handout, um, relocating the spirit of the marathon. Yes. The flame of the marathon. The sculpture. Oh, the sculpture. The flame is going to be stay where it is. Is that you know? And you, it, I remember the. I day ran the flame I in the town. So. I remember that day you ran up the the hill yeah. with that flame. Yeah. There's another opportunity that we haven't built on. That's something that that was very positive for our community. And we need to find a way to, to build on that. That's just one little item that we've kind of just got a little complacent about, Brian. Yeah. Okay. 
I think it's great stuff, and uh, I really appreciate the work of like all the folks on the 26.2. I really like the idea of combining, combining the charity runners into another sort of uh, entity as well to help them, <coughs> to encourage them, and that would be that would be neat. I can see a couple of the charities saying, "What are you doing?" and all, but you know, we can do our own little thing. They still do their thing with the charity. So, when we walked out of that meeting three weeks ago, I think you'll attest to this. There, there was a different attitude, mm -hmm. a, a greater sense of collaboration. Um, there was a, uh, let's, let's move forward. And uh, out of the mouths of the BAA leadership was uh, their commitment to help us. Hmm. And it hasn't been quite that clear uh, in the past, but it is now. Yeah. No, that's great. I'm having dinner with Tom Grilk in a couple weeks, just he and I to catch up and talk Good. about my leg and everything else. Uh, nothing sort of town related <clears throat> per se. Um, so let you know, let you know how that goes too. Well, that's the kind of stuff that's helpful. You know, after that meeting, they were—they really understood it was it was a collaboration, that it wasn't just that we're the um, we're the starting line and that's it. That they really they realized that that we want to um, help them grow and grow the brand and at the same time growing the town's brand as the as the starting line. That this that, that we we bring a lot more than than just the, the paint on the road. And we had some collaborative issues that we talked about as expanding the starting line to maybe over on to uh, Marathon <coughs> Way there. So because people were always trying to take pictures, yet then darting out in the middle of Main Street in order to, to take the picture. But if we could have a, another spot, and so it's small things like that that help their brand, but it also helps the town brand. And so I, they, they really understand that, uh, that we're really trying to work with them, but we need them to work with us. Well, I've had the privilege to know Mr. Kilduff probably before he started getting into the marathon. Uh, I knew him when he was just cool because he rode with Bob Lobel uh, at the start of the marathon. He's still cool. So he's pretty cool. Um, Bob Lobel I'm talking about. <laughs> so, uh, so the one thing that I get out of this, so, I mean, Tim's created this 26.2 foundation. Tim has been as passionate about the marathon, not just the marathon, but the marathon including Hopkinton and, and making sure that Hopkinton <coughs> is one of the first things people think about when they say the marathon for 40 years. I don't know many people that are that passionate about, about one thing for 40 years. And it's refreshing to sit there and, and to listen to him talk about this like he's a kid on Christmas Day talking about, you know, all these things that he's talking about, <clears throat> saying, you know, I really want, you know, take no offense to this. Most guys at your age are starting to wind it down. <laughs> and here he is. He's trying to start everything up and, and getting it rolling again. And it's really refreshing to see the passion of it. The views I mean, of Selectman Ted Stone do not represent that of the board. Yes, we <laughs> yeah, we understand the that. the citizens of Hopkinton. Thank you. Um, so it's just, I back you 100% as a Selectman and as a person from town. Uh, always have. And it's, it's nice to see you, and, and thank you. For, I don't know if you get enough people to say thank you for all the work that you've done over the last 40 years uh, for the marathon or for, town, for the town. And, and just seeing all these things that you're doing here, just it, the passion just exudes out of you, and, and it's not lost on me. And thank you very much for doing it, and, and uh, you I get your back. Clear. <coughs> sorry about the old comment. <laughs> not you really know, that yeah, sorry, though. Brent, if I might for a minute, I, it, I cut my teeth uh, on the marathon through guys like Ernie Fecto, yeah. Harold Rathburn, and Tom Brown. Um, and the Brown, you know the lineage of the Brown, so that, that's where all that comes from. Yeah. They did the same thing. Yep. You gotta find someone to, in marathon talk to pass the torch to, to yes, you're find right. someone to <laughs> <You're right. laughs> carry your passion along for the next 40. Thank you. You know, I mean, it's, it's hard to top Brendan's remarks because you just said that so succinctly and, and sincerely, but, um, you know, we, we call it the 26.2 Foundation, but 
the heart and soul of it is, is Tim Kiltoff and how hard you worked. And I think back just over recent years, the number of achievements, accomplishments, international recognition that you personally have worked so hard to bring to Hopkins and in the name of the 26.2 Foundation, but it's, it's been your hard work and your passion. And, um, you know, I think you alone have been responsible for bringing the marathon to be more for Hopkinton than just one day that is a tremendous event, but, you know, we, we are so much more than a host community, and, and you have really um, brought the spirit of the marathon and what it represents to this town. Um, you, you live that spirit. You um, work tirelessly to promote Hopkinton and to... Um, you are really the face of the marathon for Hoppington in so many ways, Tim. And uh, I just can't tell you how much I admire your, un your level of energy and your commitment to marathon and to this town. And um, certainly I'm sure this board will be delighted to continue the support that we have voted consistently for the 26.2 Foundation. Not many communities are as fortunate to have such a wonderful advocate. Is right. Yeah, he does all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's you know, you know, this is this is really <coughs> nice. I appreciate it, but you know, I, I, I get it. So you're off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, no, I mean, I think all the major points have been hit. But you know, it's true. You you just work tirelessly toward this stuff, and you know, I know I know for a fact that, well, well, this is the type of meeting that Tim likes in terms of trying to drive things forward he's really not the kind of guy who wants to be on TV he doesn't want his name in print he just wants to get results mm -hmm. and you know he's he's fighting for uh, recognition for the town of Hopkinton and what we add uh, to this great event every year and he's trying to make that better as well and he's trying to help Hopkinton make it better um, so you know your efforts they aren't they aren't overlooked uh, you know we appreciate them um, you know as as Brendan was saying you know he just he keeps going and going you know he's the he's the ever ready bunny of the marathon right or, and, energizer. Uh, or excuse thank energizer. you energizer <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> product placement that's right but uh, but uh, you know thanks Tim and You're welcome. Um, mr. chair if, if we're ready for a motion I'd like to move that the board uh, support the requests of the 26.2 Foundation as listed uh, on, on our handout. I'd second that. Okay, for the discussion. So that's the endorsement of the mission. Offering Hopkinton as a location somewhere. We got to figure that out. <coughs> Bobby Gibbs uh, sculpture or statue. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, continuing to support the creation of an International Marathon Center. We've already done that, I think, individually, but happy to do that again. Encourage 26.2's involvement in expansion of the non-logistic aspects of Hopkins Marathon footprint and support the foundation's receipt of the Boston Marathon charity entries once you sort of figure out how to, oh no, that's on the entries thing. That's not that other no, team thing. No. Yeah, I think these are all great. And, uh, um, you know, we have a lot of statues in town. But if we place them in appropriate places, I think it's it's cool that people can kind of move around a little bit through the community or downtown or wherever it is and just see different things. So I'm all for another one. I think I don't think we're overdoing it there at all. I've heard that in the past a little bit. If we put them all in the same three foot square, Won't yeah, work. we would. But I think as long as we take a look at different locations, it's great. Yeah, it, 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 you know, and I know that Tom that, that uh, uh, Tim's work is working because. Um, uh, Tim Groke was just coming back from London and, and when we had our meeting and um, he said that people were asking him about Hopkins when he was in London and um, so you know it, 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 it works you're getting them you're, you're getting the message out there and this is uh, absolutely I think this is this is easy to pass so um, if there's no, no more discussion all those in favor aye, aye. aye. okay Tim, the only other thing I'd like to ask is if uh, the next time we could uh, discuss the um, uh, 
uh, marathon center because that that uh, I hear some things move through concom and everything else. We might be able to start. Uh, some, you might be able to start discussion with the manager and see if we can get uh, something else moving. We'd be happy to do that as soon as your as soon as the the board would like. Sooner the better. What would our role be in that though? Isn't that concom and planning and? What do we have to do? What would we be to do yet? You know, one of the, 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 the to be honest with you, the difficult part for, um, for me personally is I am so invested here, uh, and yet we've got this great idea, this vision, um, and I can't get out of my head that it ought to be in Hopkinton. You know, they're, they're, so. Somebody wants it somewhere else. Well, there, there, the there are people that are interested in that, yeah. And yeah. so. I, it's it's a very easy conflict to me to ju to to straighten out. I I don't have to think much about that. Mm -hmm. But I, the more support that we get from the community and in particular this board, to the, to endorse this idea, the better off we are. And we need to pick up. I said before the pace, the pace is too slow. So we have endorsed it in the past, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought we were going into kind of a planning conceptual plan, mm -hmm. citing. And we have that, um, Brian, and we'd be happy to come come back in and spend 10 minutes and lay that out for you. Yeah, that's Sooner got, the better. That's got to be in Hopkinton. Yeah, I think that, that, that would be something we'd want to see. Yeah. Think it should be okay. in Hopkinton? Yeah, because you, gotta, you need somewhere to put it, right? Yes. So that's yes. where we come in place. Yes. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Excellent. So we'll put that on a future day. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Kildoff. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Keep up your pace. Yeah, it's a little late, buddy. Time for bed. <laughs> okay, now we go to the public library update. Susan Porter and Laura Barry of the American <coughs> Public Library Foundation and Heather Backman, the library director, will provide the board of selectmen with an update on the library building project and return uh, the return move to Main Street. Actually, well, we just approved a party, so I hope it's uh, I hope it's going to work. You, know, you think it will? My mother always said, if you want something done, throw a party. So uh, you know, hopefully, it's just going to be done before the party comes. So Susan's going to. Um, this is a, a, a draft program for the opening. Um, I, our meeting was ended last night, so we didn't get in time. This is work, but so um, Susan's going to talk a bit about the opening, but first I was going to update you on the progress of our move. And um, first of all, thank you all for giving us the opportunity to, to share what's happening with you. We are nearing the grand opening. Um, as you probably know, our temporary location at South Street closed to the public on Friday, September 8th. The staff spent a week packing and preparing. Our movers arrived a week ago Monday. Um, they have been primarily bringing our collections from the temporary space back and then integrating them with the materials that we had in storage, which is a painstaking item by item process. So it's been a long process, but it's almost complete. They anticipate to be done tomorrow. Um, our additional furniture will be delivered and set up this week and next. Finishing touches continue to be made to the interior of the building. Um, and most excitingly for the staff, we got our temporary certificate of occupancy yesterday afternoon. So this morning, the staff got into the building for the very first time officially, um, and they got right to work <coughs> setting up, unpacking. Uh, they really dove in. Everybody's very excited. It's a beautiful building inside. Um, I think people will be very pleased to see it. So coming up, we will continue unpacking. Uh, we will be conducting a complete inventory of our collections and participating in training on technology and building systems. Uh, the staff is going to plan for tours of the new building and prepare drop-in welcoming activities for children and teens that will be ongoing during our first week open. We're also going to resume ordering books and movies, which we've put on hold, and that will make sure that we have a nice new set of exciting stuff to offer when the building opens. Um, the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, I know I have told you this statistic many times in the past, and Deb has as well, um, estimates that on average a library in a new or renovated building experiences a 30% increase in use. So we are getting ready to welcome many new faces to the library along with our long-standing regular patrons, and we're preparing to maintain our high standard of service with a significant increase in foot traffic, especially in the first weeks and the first months of the new building. 
Uh, the staff are working very enthusiastically to get the new building ready for the public over the next couple of weeks, and we are very much looking forward to welcoming Hopkinton residents into their beautiful new library. Um, and with that, I will turn things over to Susan, who's <laughs> going to tell you about how we are going to be welcoming people in. Okay, well, um, obviously, we will be having the grand opening at the library on Monday, October 16th. Finally have a date. Um, <laughs> And it will be at the main entrance with the big glass, the beautiful glass. I do not have on here on bar the dedication of the thousand homes, but I forgot. Uh, anyway, this again, draft. Um, we wanted to have a presentation of the colors by either a representative from the Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. Obviously, this is going to be from 11 to 2 in the, um, during the day, so it will be a school day. It would involve asking. Uh, a representative from each to be dismissed from class for an hour. Um, that's something that we're working on through one of the trustees. Um, and if not, then we, and in addition, we will use the veterans. We will have the veterans come. <laughs> that's, sorry. Um, as far as speakers go, we've invited, uh, are in the process of inviting um, um, our state um, representative and senator, Governor Baker, um, um, assist, uh, attorney, yeah, right. Lieutenant Governor Polito and um, Senator Warren, Senator Markey, and Representative Kennedy. So we'll see who responds before we can pick who, or we can decide who would be able to be a speaker. So um, we will have to wait on that. Um, Whoever for, shows up is going to want to speak. <laughs> exactly, exactly, which is why we have to wait and see who it, that may be. Our MBLC commissioner must speak because they provided us with $4.5 million, and we would like to acknowledge their presence. Um, we do, do, we, do we know which commissioner it is? Uh, yeah. No, we do not. We I do not. not. We will find that yet. out. Um, and Laura, of course. For the foundation and for the uh, PBC, since she has been involved all along, very long, <laughs> and our fantastic and thank you so much <laughs> new director Heather will be speaking at the end of the speakers, leading into the rib ribbon cutting. Um, the closing remarks for the library trustee will will only be a thank you for coming, come on in, we're going to have tours. Um, in, with our limited resources, since the trustees do have no budget, <laughs> we have ordered invitations to be sent out, which will go out this week. And we've also talked with Snappy Dogs, a uh, Hopkinton institution, and they are willing to set up possibly in the parking lot, that's something that we have to pass up by the town and the police department. Um, if the trustees buy the hot dogs and rolls, they will donate their time and everything else, and that will keep refreshments out of the library, um, so preserve our new carpets <laughs> to some extent. Set your precedent, right? Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> no food and no speaking. Well, you know, <laughs> there is that. <laughs> but for that specific time, that way we would be able to, to arrange that and have that available. It, again, they would like to do it as a, a gesture of goodwill and also because they are a Hopkinton institution. Um, so we would like to do that. Um, and the trustees will be given tours of the library after we have a tour of the library. Um, and uh, we'll be um, present to have tours to through, through the, the, the um, opening time frame of till two o'clock, but then again from five to seven that evening. Then the trustees will again give tours on that following Saturday, first Saturday we're open. During the week, we, um, Heather talked and I talked, well, Heather and the board and I discussed having the volunteers that work regularly, regular hours give the tours during the week when they're, they're there. So we will have somebody there to show people around and show off our great new building. The other big deal is the <coughs> grandfather clock that the friends are, are rehabbing and um, going to have installed for the day, for opening day. 
Um, Hunter Kissam has a history of the clock and wants to give it, um, will be giving a presentation on the history of the clock in the main conference room. He has large event. Um, video, video that he will be using. And then the clock will be installed in the, the small, the Ellsworth conference room, which is actually in the old library. The small, it will be a small conference room in the old, in the old library when you first come in. It's, it's actually going back exactly where it was before we moved out. Yeah. <laughs> so. Including with the original uh, paint colors. <laughs> But um, anyway, the clock will be in that room, and um, after um, Mr. Kissam's um, presentation, we'll, people will go into that room, and they will be a, uh, a dedication and a restarting of the clock to start our new library. Um, Linda Conley's going to be available to do some um, historical society, historical um, collection tours, ask, answer questions, show people the, histor the historical room, which is going to be fantastic with, uh, you know, all kinds of good stuff in it. <laughs> and that's, um, that's about it. No, that's not it. Excuse me. The Friends of the Library, in collaboration with the Garden Club, are doing um, installations called Books in Bloom. They are going to come in over the weekend, still to be Monday morning. Determine Monday morning. Yes. Is it Monday morning? Yes. Okay. Um, each section of the library, they'll be pick an appropriate book, and the garden club will get, do a floral floral installation to go with that book, and they'll be placed throughout the library, and will remain as long as they stay alive. <laughs> so that will be a beautiful thing for people to see, and it will be great to point out on the tour that they're doing that. So um, that's our opening day <laughs> as far as I could tell yeah. so if anyone has any questions about it Mr. Uh, Chair can, yes. uh, you may have touched on this and I may not have heard what, what is the invocation with Connor Deegan as yeah, town clerk? yeah you need to talk to him we decided to go non-denominational rather than having a um, one of the the, um, the uh, religious figures in town have it so we had suggested this is again our meeting was last night <laughs> um, we suggested possibly Connor could do just some kind of a you know calling together um, and so I do need to talk to him about that um, if anyone has any other suggestions a calling together but not necessarily what some would construe as a prayer service or something right. like that right exactly because, okay. because that's what that yeah that's the Got point it. of trying to keep it non-denominational makes sense Great. So, um, so that yes, maybe we could call on one of you to do it <laughs> if Connor. Mr. Yeah, Chair. If Connor, mm -hmm. Yes. Mr. Tedstone. Mm -hmm. um, this looks great. This looks like a great event. Mm -hmm. um, planning on getting to that. Okay. Um, I love that you have an Ellsworth conference room. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Mrs. Ellsworth was a long, long, long time uh, librarian was. there when mm -hmm. I was growing up, along with Mrs. Cumlin mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. the others so yep. it's, it's great to My see daughter too, yes. yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's it's great to see um, that the, I'm big into the history of Hopkinton and, and trying to mm -hmm. keep Hopkinton uh, you know in the forefront mm -hmm. the old Hopkinton in the forefront of our memories yes. with all the changes and, and I think just seeing that is, is very warm and inviting to me. So Good. thank you for uh, yes. thank you for doing something like that. that was, yeah. And also thank the foundation, the foundation for that too. And yeah. that actually is um, a memoriam. Um, the Ellsworth family as part of, um, I guess as a segue, to right. our, our last piece of our <laughs> joint presentation tonight, um, the library itself, the trustees. Um, as a representative of the Library Foundation, um, I'm here to talk to you about the event that is sort of the capstone fundraising event. But part of our fundraising, which is now 97, 98% complete to the $1 million goal, was 1,000 Homes for Hopkinton Library, where a number of families um, contributed $1,000 or more um, to be included on a plaque, which will be hung in the library. And for amounts of $2,500 or larger, there were other um, areas of the library that could be named as well. And the Ellsworth family came together with a very generous gift, and in turn, they, 
they um, have selected and received the opportunity on our list, um, which is subject all to the selectman's approval, of course, of the naming of the room, which we are now calling the Ellsworth Room, which is, which is a beautiful room, and, and it, it duly honors the, the family and the commitment to the town. That's good. She was a beautiful person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds wonderful. It's, and uh, I know the town is so excited. This has been the cul culmination of quite a number of years and uh, just comes at a wonderful time with the family day happening a couple of weeks ago. And it's just just a wonderful time for our town. I can't remember when we dedicated a brand new building that wasn't a school. Really, this is, this is really historic for the town. So thank you for all your hard work. It sounds great. Um, I know that the efforts run much deeper than the people that I'm going to mention, but uh, you know, two of the people up here, uh, Laura and Scott. Um, first of all, I remember my first conversation with Laura. It was about nine years ago. I was just getting going, running for selectman, and she cornered me at a coffee. She says. How do you feel about a new library? <laughs> but uh, you know, and she made it very clear from day one that that was that was her goal, that was her pursuit, and she wasn't going to stop until it got done. Um, Scott, uh, you know, all these fun occasions around town, you always seem to be a part of. <laughs> you know, you always seem to be a part. You're a part of the great things that happen here. Um, you know, you, I know you remain kind of quiet and behind the scenes for the most part, but um, you know, I think a lot of people know that you have a lot to do with things that are happening in town, and, and we appreciate that as well. That's not to discount anybody's contributions. Uh, you know, I know that it goes much deeper, but those are the people that I've been in, in contact with on a, on a fairly regular basis over the last decade. And, uh, you know your efforts. Uh, your efforts help to make Hopkinton a better place. Everybody's not just the the two folks that I pulled out, but uh, and they're appreciated by everyone. So thank you. Looking forward to this. Yeah, I just I just keyed it into my phone. So <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, I, I remember one of my first meetings as a, as a selectman. That was when we first started talking about the uh, the library. That was actually when it was still a little controversial whether or not it was going to happen or not and and um, and I'm really glad to see it coming coming to fruition every Sunday as I go as I go past and look trying to look in the windows <laughs> heading to church and uh, you know it's just seeing it come together and, 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 and been looking forward to this October 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 and, and really it's another construction project that's that's uh, hitting its timeline again it's it's great to see but thank you for all the work that that uh, everyone has done and, and it's, it looks like it's going to be a Great ribbon cutting, and, and Scott, another ribbon cutting. Way to go! That's <laughs> fun. Yeah, yeah, I know. Thanks for all the all the hard work. Thanks for coming again tonight to update us on all this and, and update the town on it. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> okay, board. Oh, uh, board invites. <laughs> Mr. Kamala, I think there's a, there's a whole bunch because the, coming out of summer, we usually get hit with a whole bunch in September and October. Okay. Um, it's a long list. I, I now need to ask Maria to provide a summary if we're going to get as many invitations as we do okay. we'll, this time. We'll yeah, we'll um, and, and, I'll start and, with and big ones other than the ones that we just uh, put into our uh, calendars? Yeah, we c yes, I, I, I think the big one is uh, we'll start with uh, tomorrow evening. There's the Main Street Corridor Project Public Forum uh, scheduled to begin at 6 p.m. at the Senior Center. And then there's also the invitation uh, to the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk in Boston, Sunday, October 1st, 2017. Come test the drive electric cars. I'm sure we're going to send Dave to that test drive too. Wednesday, October 25th, Quincy Marriott, Quincy, Massachusetts. Uh, this is uh, hosted by the MAPC. And we're hoping that if Dave goes to this uh, event, then 
that would qualify us for an electric vehicle uh, offered to the town as a grant. And then DOER uh, is also inviting um, the board to its next event, Constant Contact. In fact, this is, this is a publication um, that they are launching, uh, inviting the board to uh, enroll if need be. And then moving together conference, uh, this is September 28th. Um, it's going to be uh, in Boston um, from 7.45 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. 50 Park Plaza uh, at Arlington, Boston. And that's it. So, all right, liaison reports. Mr. Hur. Um, I'll start with the schools. So we had our joint meeting a couple weeks ago, and then we were going to do a budget calendar and circulate that. That has been done, correct? So we're all set there. All set. And nothing changed from what we discussed <coughs> to what went out to the various participants? Yeah, the, yes, the, nothing changed except that uh, I think when the board discussed the budget calendar, we did not translate the changes in the dates to the bottom part of the calendar relating to the capital projects. Okay. Yeah. But we're all set and everyone's kind of on the same page. We'll start having those meetings, the joint, mm -hmm. whatever we call that meeting soon, right? The budget advisory meetings. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so then the schools asked if I would serve on the uh, schools uh, committee, subcommittee to conduct a new superintendent uh, search. Uh, Dr. McLeod is retiring at the end of the school year and uh, they had a search committee several years ago that put Dr. McLeod in place. I was on it then and they asked if I would rejoin, so I agreed to do that. So the superintendent search committee uh, has not gotten started yet, uh, but will at some time in the near future, I assume. Uh, also, the turf fields subcommittee to the school committee uh, continues its work. Uh, the subcommittee put together a application for a CPC uh, award as part of the budgeting process to see how that would work into the whole uh, scheme of a phased approach for the turf fields. Um, and I know that that application was a draft application or the pre preliminary application was submitted to the CPC a couple weeks back. Uh, so that's still ongoing. There's another meeting in the morning I'm going to for the turf fields. Um, we had a meeting with the Metro West Regional Transit Authority uh, Executive Director, myself, Mr. Kamalo, uh, and the folks from the Senior Center, and we're working hard to improve and enhance uh, the ride service here in Hopkinton for individuals that need specific rides for specific reasons to specific locations. So we're working on that. And the Metro West Regional Transit Authority is uh, working hard, as, as is uh, the Senior Center folks and Mr. Kamal and his team to uh, make that happen. That's a little bit more complicated than one would think, but um, <laughs> uh, we are working at it and uh, we should be able to get that done. And uh, I am now the unofficial DJ of Hopkinton High School home football games. So if you're wondering who's blasting uh, Metallica at the beginning of the second half, that would be yours truly. And I don't want to hear any complaints. Thank you. Can we put in requests? You okay. can. <laughs> I had you pegged more for Ray Cunniff, but <clears throat> that's good. I like Metallica. It's fun. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so obviously with the um, elementary school, they came and did a, a pretty good presentation today to let us know where we're at and how we're doing, and, and uh, they've been working pretty hard. We've all been working pretty hard on that, and uh, that's about it. Sorry. Nothing to report. The um, Sandra School <coughs> Reuse Advisory Team has uh, had two meetings now, and uh, they elected former police chief Rick Flannery as their chairman because Rick had nothing else to do after the Charter Commission was over. Um, and uh, the, the board has uh, <coughs> toured the center school site and looked at the condition of the building and the, the layout of the site. And um, a uh, questionnaire has been sent out to all the town boards and committees asking their input for any kind of 
uh, needs that they feel their department might have that might be met by the center school building or site in any way. So we will be uh, synthesizing those and uh, beginning the process of evaluating different uses and different opportunities for the building in, in the next uh, coming months. So that's where the committee is right now. And that's all I have to report on right now. Mr. Chair, could I ask a question of that sure. committee, please? Mrs. Wright, the, was there a construction professional on that committee? Do you know? Someone's not familiar with I commercial? I know of. I mean, I, I'm not familiar. I've been in that school a million times with the yeah. kids, but my sense is when we go in there to move a tile or do anything, everything it's like town hall mm -hmm. times 10 because it's a much bigger building. Mm -hmm. the, the likelihood of us or whoever uh, getting in and out of there easily with a rehab is very, it's a very small chance that that's going to happen. I mean, it's just this old house. Yeah, this is huge. So we just have to, I think the committee has to keep that in mind that this is going to be a major rehab. No matter what we want to do, it's going to be a major rehab. It's going to cost a major amount of money. And we just have to be ready to understand and deal with that. I, my practice, my, my, my experience with these things in, in, in the past, uh, we get volunteers that are eager to go and they want to figure out what we're going to do with it. And they pick out 10 things they want to do and they think they're going to be done. I remember I went to my first CAA barn committee meeting to, to rehab the barn, which is now where the HCA sits, to fix that foundation. And some of the volunteers literally showed up with hammers. And they're like, aren't we going to start working on this tonight? And I'm like, we're about three years away from that. But they couldn't get that. They were, they were very frustrated by that, actually. I can understand why. Um, but my sense is that this, this school repurposing project, this is a long project, and this is going to be an expensive project. And, and the, my sense is from some that we're just going to do something with it pretty quick. That is not going to so. be the case. And I just don't want the community to get frustrated early on with the process. No, it, uh, it, it's going to be a big issue to get our arms around and, and get a sense of where to go. And there are several different distinct parts of the building. There's the land and back. So there, you know, there, there are a lot of different facets to the project. And um, to your point about is there someone with construction experience, and I know that you know, when this board put together the committee, we had several categories that we were looking for volunteers to fill for those five voting members. Um, and, you know, we're very grateful for the citizens that, who did show up, but at the same time, we were sort of up against a wall of timing to get moving. Um, and, and quite frankly, um, you know, for instance, there was a, a request or, or an idea that at least an architect should be on that board. And, um, you know, in some instances, these different skill sets are not, have not been represented on the board. So, you know, I would say to the public watching, if there is an individual that has that kind of really hands-on construction or architectural experience and would like to serve on the board, um, I believe we'd love to hear from them. And it certainly would not be on, be beyond this board to make some changes or additions to that committee because yeah, you're totally absolutely agree. right. And um, that, that is a need and it's <coughs> ongoing. That's a great point. Yeah, yeah, great points, really great points because um, it, it is a, it's an old building, it's got several yep. sections and, uh, and the, the land the and everything else. And, and, and people have to understand that it, it, the, the rehab, you know, that it's not going to just, you, uh, who, I think somebody just brought up the, the moving of the, uh, the, the old materials out of the building. That's yeah. the, there's an expense there, then the, the uh, millions of dollars to, to bring it to whatever we want it to. If I can just add, yes. I will say that there have been similar buildings in similar communities. It seems to have been sort of a 1920s school in a box kit, that there's one in Holliston that got rehab, there's one in Wellesley, the Kingsford Street School that got rehab. Um, they look an awful lot like Center School. So um, I recognize the issues of the old building, but it, it has been done in other communities. We also want to look at what other communities have done. Um, well, we did it with the high school here. No, but I mean that particular vintage of building and that particular mm -hmm. style. There are several examples of, of repurposing right in our communities around us. So um, we'll have to look at those too. Okay. Well, I, um, last uh, Monday I went to a um, uh, implementing best practices seminar at uh, um, Holy Cross. Um, 
to, to work on uh, tighter budget forecasting and uh, rent writing and all of that for the uh, to try and help out. Um, then, uh, then we had the meeting with the Eversource about the uh, liquefier where we, we made it crystal clear that we are against any of the changes and that uh, uh, we uh, testified to the DPU that uh, we are not behind uh, Eversource in, in, in any aspect. Um, and I think that covers it for the stuff that I did. So future board agenda items, Mr. Sestari. Are we on town manager's report? Oh. We're skipping that. Oh, I guess we could do it. Good idea to skip. Fast anyway. Maybe a good idea to skip the town manager's report. Okay, then let's go for it. Yes, uh, quickly. We have shared with you the <coughs> draft annual town meeting and budget timeline. Um, first off, let, let, me, let me thank Elaine uh, for the hard work that she put into at least accomplishing two objectives. Number one, as you may recall, under the new town charter, there is an attempt to line up the budget calendar with the annual town meeting calendar. Uh, not perfect at this point, and Elaine, as the operations director, uh, worked out a process that may at least get us moving in that direction. Uh, and then secondly, as you will see, she also did a good job identifying the key deliverables for the Board of Selectmen. It may be difficult for the town manager to order the selectmen to do anything, but I think we should allow the operations director to direct the selectmen's agenda uh, in this regard. So specifically, uh, I think these are the key highlights. Uh, on the first page, I draw your attention to the December deadline, beginning of December, where we are inviting all town officials and members of town boards to submit the draft one and articles for review by town council. What this does is upfront if there are any legal issues that need to be resolved, we're able to do so before the whole process begins. And then at the bottom, December 19th, 2017, Board of Selectmen vote to open the annual town meeting warrant. And what this does too is it brings us closer to lining up the time when the selectmen have the visibility or uh, the opportunity to review articles simultaneously as you are also looking at the um, the FY19, in this case, FY19 capital articles. As you know, in the past, we've had instances where some articles show up in, in April or in May. Under this uh, um, calendar, we'll be able to at least begin to line up the two processes. And then next page, right at the top, the warrant opens January 7th. And then midway February 6, 2018, the annual town meeting warrant closes. As you know, we have 90 days for the warrant to be open. And then right at the bottom, March 13, 2018, the selectmen begin reviewing the draft ATM warrant. And then next page, March 27th, we project that the final ATM warrant and draft motions um, will be reviewed by the Board of Selectmen at that point. And then the Selectmen may start taking positions on the warrant articles at that time. And then April 10th, 2018, I hope there will be no need for this, but if there's need, the Selectmen can finalize the ballot questions April 10th, 2018. And then right at the bottom, uh, second row from the bottom, April 24th, 2018, the Board of Selectmen signed the annual town meeting warrant. And we're hoping that at this point too, we will finalize the motions. If that <coughs> happens, then we're in a good position to actually put the documents in the annual town report. And then annual town meeting, May 7th, 2018. These are the key highlights. Again, it's a document that we will continue to refine as the, process, the budget process unfolds, but we thought it was important that we accomplish the two goals. Number one, begin to line up the annual town meeting calendar with the budget calendar. And then two, uh, from an operational perspective, define exactly how we get to the key milestones or milestone dates. Questions? Sir. 
this is great. Very well done and very well organized and I think mapped out. Someone's going to be very busy. I assume that's delaying to some extent and some others perhaps. Yes. Um, the only thing I don't see in here are these joint committee meetings that we're going to schedule in between some of these milestone dates. Is that going to be, is that going to fall to you, Elaine, to kind of pull those meetings together and make them happen with the schools, yourself, and appropriations? Or is that going to be the schools that are just going to set that, that separate calendar from this calendar, or how are you going to do that? We'll have to work to set a calendar when people are available. Okay. Add yeah. those in. But who has that ball? Is that going to be, you're going to be the quarterback for that? Or is that going to be Mr. Kamala? You know, yeah. Quite a pause. Exactly. It may, it may be the town manager doing that, but obviously with assistance from, from Elaine. Um, and I'm assuming you are referring to the budget advisory meetings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. exactly. Okay. Yeah. Great. And those are going to be at least once a month? Is that? At least once a month, and I think as I jokingly uh, commented to Brian Hare, in the private sector, right. meetings are set with an agenda in mind and with key deliverables to <laughs> 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 yeah and, and we will aim we will aim towards that yeah okay. um any other questions that's great yes <clears throat> I, I have one um question and this is great and it, it's laid out very very uh, succinctly um Last year, we had a situation where I'm reading the different dates for the Board of Selectmen to finalize our own town meeting articles. I remember last year there was a situation where there was an article that came out from the planning board, and at the end, they didn't want to touch it, and they kicked it over to the Board of Selectmen, and it became a bit of a controversial article, and it had our name on it, and we had it was not an article that we necessarily wanted to put forth. And at that time, I know it, it bothered me that our name was attached to something that we really didn't, maybe didn't even endorse or get a good chance to have input on. So I can understand how that might happen, something coming on a planning board. Um, I see the date for the planning board's public hearing on their zoning articles is February 12th. And I think the very next date, 13th, was our opportunity to finalize our own town meeting articles. I, I would assume that in the time where later on we take positions on warrant articles, that time would give us opportunity to also discuss or accept or decline articles that happen to be thrown onto us as well. I'm, and and it, Lane's it, nodding, so I, yeah. I just, I didn't like the process last time for an article that had our name on it, so. Well, that was, I think that was one of the first times that it actually hit us, and, and that, that actually came about in Zach yeah. initially, where um, one of the articles coming down was really a general bylaw change that, that they were trying to put through, and general bylaws have to go through um, by charter. They have to go through the Board of Selectmen. So we ended up having some time. It, it, it came to us from there, but just mm -hmm. like just like we'd be here, I'm sure that they'd, they'd give us time. <coughs> As it seems now, there's nothing coming through. Should be coming through Zach for general bylaws at this point. I just want to make sure that we have enough time to properly vet something if it ends up going on to the warrant under the name of our board. Yeah. In, in, in fact, timing-wise, we are hoping that by the end of December, we will have a very good sense as to the prospective articles coming forth. And in fact, at the December 5th meeting, I think what we'll do is we will also send in a, a, a request to the other town boards prior to that meeting to indicate any subject areas or themes that they are considering that may require input from the selectmen. Good. Yeah. That'd be good. Okay. 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 Moving on, um, the next item, in fact, is a response to some of the comments as well as uh, input from the public that came out of the last carnival held in town. Uh, 
as I think the board previously discussed, I think it needs to be said over and over that this was a great effort by the PTA uh, to <coughs> fundraise for our very fine school system. And therefore, what we're proposing is a way to facilitate these kinds of requests going forward. What I'm looking for tonight uh, is input from the board as to what you believe uh, and comprehensive entertainment license policy focusing on carnivals should incorporate uh, to help the conversation. I suggested the following, uh, that there be an application in writing to the Board of Selectmen. Next, within 30 days of receipt of the application, that the Board may either grant the license or, based on your preliminary assessment, require that a public hearing be held. And that, in itself, will trigger notice to the abattas. I think one, one, one comment that we received um, 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 in relation to the last carnival was that there was no systematic way of seeking input or notifying the abattas. And that's why I think the, the concept of holding a hearing will give us the opportunity to notify abattas. And then within 45 days of the close of such hearing, the board may grant a license or deny the license upon specific findings. And we have identified three areas that the board could base its findings. Traffic, disruptive conduct in the neighborhood, and finally, noise levels. And again, we are asking the board to provide us with your suggestions in terms of how we can refine or expand the areas that the board will need to make a finding. I would add to that lighting. Lighting? Yeah. <clears throat> I would add to that, and this is a, a very, very big concern of mine, <clears throat> is the quarry checks. I understand that the quarry checks were done last year, but I understand they weren't all followed through on as far as making sure that the only people that work there were quarried and <clears throat> just because they're quarried there needs to be very 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 strong language in there that if you don't pass your quarry or more importantly a sorry that you can't be there because the only thing that we had on our policy last year is that they were quarried so they had some dirty quarry and dirty sorry people there. What's a sorry? Sexual. Offender. Not criminal, but sexual. Sex so <clears throat> they did their due diligence. They did it to, to what they had to do. They did the sorry, but a dirty sorry and dir dirty quarry did not disqualify them. Okay. Uh, and I know that visually for a fact because my prior place of employment was at the maximum security prison and there was a person that was there working that was a sexual predator and that had gotten out that I recognized and I know why he was in prison. He was quarried and sorried, but it was a dirty quarry sorry. <clears throat> so that bothers me more than you can even begin to, to fathom. So we need to be very, very vigilant and crystal clear that any type of ding on these quarry sorries are see you later. Mm -hmm. Any other suggestions? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was an automatic. You yeah. do a Corey check, and there's a there's a mark against you in that check. Then you don't you don't show. You can't be there. But if it just says, oh yeah, this is what you got to watch for. But and that's crazy. And that's crazy. obviously, I didn't go over and have a conversation with this lad, but I'm assuming that he was Corey sorry. And if he weren't, if he wasn't, then he shouldn't have been there as an employee. So we need to be more diligent. On well, we want a clean <coughs> Corey. Yeah, absolutely, crystal yeah. clean. Right. So if we didn't specify that, that's shame yeah. on us. But I, I just assumed that was inherent in that process. <clears throat> it's a state process. I mean, it's regulated by the state. Mm -hmm. Okay. Scala, anything else? Um, yes. Um, also, we 
we were suggesting that if if, if the carnival uh, does not have its principal place of business within the Commonwealth, that will require additional insurance. And also that if the carnival is held on a Sunday, that they also apply for a uh, Sunday license. Uh, now, are these all the concerns that came up? Were there any additional ones that, uh, that were not hitting that were hot buttons? The butters. So we cover that. Yeah. Okay. We cover the smoking. So, how much did this carnival raise last year? Do we know? I don't have that number. I think it was. I want to say it was fifty grand or. That's great. Sixty grand, something like that. I'm just guessing that my vague memory what they talked about. Um, there's a lot of good that can come out of a well-run carnival. Yep. You know, the Holliston Carnival is in a different spot because the schools are in a different spot. The parking lots, are, you know, a little less crowded and everything over that way. But um, a, a well-run carnival can be a good fundraiser for the community. And the HPTA, that was the HPTA, right? HPTA does great things for Hopkinton. So mm -hmm. these are all scary things that you're bringing up. And, you know, the lighting was a frustration, the noise and the generators and the smoking. I can't stand smoking. So, you know, all that stuff. Uh, we got to fix, but we can't throw the, you know, I wouldn't say we're not having any more carnivals in Hopkins. No, I wouldn't either. Absolutely not. I thought I just, it was I don't want to leave that impression because I'm sensitive to a little bit of that here too, so. Mm -hmm. I'd like to well run carnival. Yep. Mm -hmm. I would just like it to be safe free. Yeah. Well, it, you know, if I may, um, yeah. I, because it is a big deal. I mean, between the traffic and the lights and the noise, there's no way a carnival is going to be a small affair. And so um, I really feel that with your item two here, there are two options right now. Within 30 days, the board may grant it or order hearing. I, I would eliminate the first part. I think this has to have a public hearing. I, I, I can't see a situation where you want to give within 30 days permission for a <coughs> carnival without the butters and public hearing process and opportunity to have all these considerations. I, I just can't see how you do it without a public hearing. I think a public hearing makes sense. Yeah. yeah. We just got to time it out well and right to I mean well, I mean, to that point though, the applicant needs to realize this is not something that you just, you know, do by the seat of the pants. This is a well thought out, well planned event, and it takes it takes some time, and there's a process that has to be gone through. You're not going to do it. Yeah, this at isn't the drop this isn't the boot drive where you know they can get away with coming to us a week and a half before the boot drive. I, I think they did a fabulous job this year learning. I mean, this is talk yeah, about talk about yeah, change yeah. earlier tonight. Oh, yeah. This was change for us. I'm just saying, it's a great it's, change, it's, but there's some issues. It's, with it's it. getting to another level of complexity. But right point. Aaron right Graziano right on and her team, I thought, did an awesome mm -hmm. job yeah. putting this thing together. So, but we, yeah. you know, we can all learn, and I'm sure she's open to learning too. But I mean, that was a very that was a lot of work for her. I'm not speaking against the carnival at all. I think it was a great event. It's a lot of fun. But there certainly are issues involved with it, particularly with the butters, and I think we just need to give it a proper hearing um, when we bring this level of an event. And it's usually not one day, usually this lasts for several days. Um, and sighting. And so, sighting. And sighting has yeah. a lot to do with it because, you know, it, it, they weren't always there. You, you, you were. Yep. You grew up here. Yep, I sure did. Um, yeah, we used to have carnivals. Well, we didn't have the new high school back then. All of our carnivals were always in the uh, in the middle. What's now the middle school, where the junior high wing was, and um, they were a blast. They were great. They were well run, um, and so and so was the other one. I'm not saying this other one wasn't, but I think. Hey, was I mean, I'm no carnival one? organizer, but. Um, you could certainly, I, I think that there's more room in the middle school parking lot than there is in the high school in that area that they had it. So, um, you know, maybe like you said, placement, that kind of puts it away from a good portion of the, uh, of the of butters as far as being out front on Route 85, where it's back a little bit. Um, you know, there's, you could probably find, who knows, maybe the behind center school. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll look at that when we, can, when we get there. All right, Mr. Camalo. Yes, uh, finally, um, the FY17 
financial report. I think this is a great um, report to the community uh, as well as to, to the board. Um, for me, the information that, that really stands out, I think, is, is threefold. Uh, number one, the, 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 the revenue uh, that came in um, basically met the projections that we had identified. The, the only bad news, I think, as Chris pointed out in his memo to the town manager, is that if you isolate the local receipts, uh, they came in at about 500,000 surplus, um, but they are still 500,000 below the uh, FY18 estimates. And then in terms of the year-to-date budget uh, income, if you look at the list of the expenses, the town departments are giving back around $1 million back to the community. Um, for me, uh, that speaks um, to the um, financial prudence, frugality, and good spending decisions that, that the, the department heads, guided by the different town boards, make after the budget is approved. Uh, and, and, and Brian, you, <coughs> we've talked about this for, for years now. I think you can see that our culture is, is no longer spend, 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 spend. Uh, we only spend when it's absolutely necessary. Just the operational side, give back around $380,000. Um, I, I think that's, that's a testament to the good work that the departments do alongside the leadership and guidance provided by, by the town boards. I'll take any questions. I, I, again, this is good information. This is, I, I think, a, 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 a positive uh, statement on a life well run. You always have to come first. Um, not necessarily. <laughs> um, I'm confused. You mentioned that we have local receipts that were in, in excess of projections, yeah. but a half million dollars short of. How? I understand that. Yeah. Again, the the total revenues, in terms of the global picture. Total if you, exactly. Yes, total revenues coming in. Yeah. We met our targets. Yeah. However, what we are pointing out is that if you isolate the local receipts, that's where we were. We were short on local them. receipts, but we we're on target for all revenues combined. Yes. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's right. Okay. Sorry. Um, can you just tell me what the miscellaneous non-recurring budget? line item is? Um, it was $176,000 that yeah. we didn't plan on spending. Yeah, um, this, this could have been one of the items that we added to the budget because of a projected mandate. I, I'll have to check back with, uh, with Chris as to exactly which line item it is. In fact, I need to find out. I don't, I don't have that right now. That's fine. Yeah. Um, do we have any idea how much of this is attributable to um, positions that may not have been backfilled immediately, just salaries? It, it's a substantial number. I think it's no, <coughs> it could be anything between two and 250,000. Okay. Yeah. So, the mind, it's a similar question, um, but the, you know, the remaining balance, general government, and then uh, the uh, public works, 314 coming back in. This is part of that million dollars we're talking about. Did we, did we appropriate too much money at, at, for, for, for these at one time because we're getting so much back? Or, you know, it's like when you're talking about yeah. Paying taxes, and you know, you don't want to overpay just to get a just to get a refund in, in, in April. 
Yeah, I think for, for, for public works, it's largely the stormwater phase two program. Okay. Yeah. The mandate has not hit yet. <laughs> yeah. So on those, on those salaries, you know, if we're looking at two to $250,000, I mean, I'm just thinking that's, you know, what, four or five FTEs, something like that. Um, how could how could we be that short of FTEs uh, of our budgeted FTEs and still be providing the services that we are? Here's how. Um, look, for example, we'll use the town manager's office. We have had the operations um, project specialist position unfilled mm -hmm. up to date because because we are still trying to see how the operations director picks up some of the load from the town manager. We're close to making the decision mm -hmm. uh, whether to hire or not to hire. Um, similarly, <coughs> downstairs we also have the, um, the, the accountant position that we have actually filled using a lower level uh, salary position. We are assessing how we're going to move that forward. Uh, and we have other positions where we've had transitions. In addition, the part of that number, part of that part of that number, taught includes money that we had reserved in the compensation reserve for other salary-related issues. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Anything? Okay. Is that it for you for the town manager's report? Yes. Excellent. Yeah. Now we can move on to future board agenda items. Mr. I have nothing at this time. Thank you. Good stuff. I will piggyback off Mr. Hur. Say I have nothing at this time, Mr. Chair. Ms. Wright? I don't have anything, but I know there was a revelation later on that one of our previous votes in the naming of the McIntyre barn needed a change. Oh, yes. need, we need to put that on a future agenda, or is that something oh, we yes. might be able to address this evening? That's a Scribner's error. I don't think that's a we need to do anything with that. That's why I didn't respond. Yeah. It's just, it's just Scribner's error. Yeah. Okay. It was, long, but it was in the motion. It was very clearly yeah, in the yeah, motion. Yeah, you actually said J period. You right. said that too. Okay. Sure so he doesn't have J yeah. periods. <laughs> yeah. I just want to make sure. Well, if somebody gets the word to the sign maker, we don't pay for a J. <laughs> or period. Or period. Or period. Or period. Or period. Yeah. Or period. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're not adding to the motion. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mr. Sistari. I have a couple things I'd like to asked for. Um, this one I've asked in the past and I'm hoping that we can get to it soon before we get too far into the fiscal year and we uh, sign contracts and make commitments. And that's around um, how we're creating criteria for use of consultants, uh, the consultants that we use uh, year after year after year. I'd like for us to review what it is that, uh, or I guess, how we're asking them to deliver the information that they give us, uh, how we're, you know, going to see if we're using the right people and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Another one that I mentioned, I believe, at the beginning of the summer, and um, it may be that this has been on an agenda, and I, I know I missed a meeting in the summer, so it, just tell me if it's already been covered. Um, but I'd like to have our DPW director come in. Uh, to review with the board, um, A, how things are going in general in the department, mm -hmm. and B, I'd like for us to get a little bit more insight into how he's, how he's managing all the projects that go on in town, who's working on what and when, uh, whether we have something in place where if we pick a particular project, you know, say a patching on you know, a certain street that you know, was just an isolated thing, how much that costs us, uh, how much it costs the taxpayers, including the labor hours of DPW guys, uh, special detail for police and things of that nature. And generally, you know, how we're tracking our resources and the efficiency of the use of those resources. Then the last thing I'd like to mention is, uh, you know, and I'm gonna kind of back up and give a little bit of, um, it's gonna sound weird, so I'm gonna give a little bit of history as to why I would like this to happen or this discussion to take place but as many people in Hopkinton already know and I'm sure there are some who don't know uh, Hopkinton has uh, deep roots when it comes to the NBA 
Um, we have uh, Walter Brown was one of the founders of the Boston Celtics, one of the original 11 teams in the NBA. He was very involved in the NBA uh, throughout his life to the point where the championship trophy was actually named after him for 20 years. Uh, his family has had deep roots in Boston sports. Uh, they've also had roots in the Olympic Committee and, and coaching hockey teams, managing hockey teams, pulling them together for the Olympics, mm -hmm. as well as for the Bruins. Um, you know, and, and then tying also together the fact that uh, since the 80s and the Reagan administration, uh, professional championship teams have always been given their national day in the spotlight as opposed to just the local ticker tape parade. I would like for this board to have a discussion and possibly put forward an invitation to Golden State Warriors to come to Hopkinton to celebrate their national championship in the NBA last year. I would love to meet Steph Curry. <laughs> He's an amazing athlete. And uh, the only one I wanted to add is um, an update uh, from uh, 262 and, and, and what the next steps are, as, as Mr. Herr Her pointed out, what the, uh, uh, how to move forward on, that, on the uh, Marathon Center project okay. and all of that. That item that Mr. Sestari asked for, that doesn't require any action from us right now, right? No, that's no, that's, it's, that's it's a, future. It's a future, <coughs> agenda. It's future agenda item, yeah. but, uh, you know, I'd request that we could, that we take it up at the next meeting if we're going to take it up at all. Um, oh, just being pushy now. Uh, <laughs> okay. Just uh, because of timing of, yeah. of seasons and, and uh, what I would anticipate their work schedules are. Work schedules. Okay. Do you have anything you want to put on? No. Is that enough work? Excellent. Yeah. Well, with that, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. See you at the next meeting. Thank you.